So, you know, uh, the video that you say that they sent to NCIS and, and for audience that doesn't know what NCIS is, NCIS is uh, it's the intelligence organization, right? It's, uh, it's uh, the, uh, what does NCIS stand for? Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Yeah, Naval Criminal in Investigative. Okay. So when, once it goes there, there was one video that was circulating. What was that one video with the body that was limp? And you apologize for that one video. I don't know what they had, John. Was that on 60 Minutes? There was somewhere I saw a video with you. So one body. there's pictures. So what they did when they raided my house, uh, they had, they took, they took all my phones, everything. Um, and uh, there was a picture of me posing with a dead ISIS fighter, uh, along with uh, 12 other people in my platoon. Um, and also I had sent a text message uh, to a buddy of mine um, during that deployment as a joke um, with that picture saying, good story behind this, got him with a hunting knife. Uh, that was a dark humor. Um, I, but I'll tell you what, that, that was the best and pe worst piece of evidence they had against me. Um, you know, it was the worst because obviously it makes me look pretty guilty uh but if you you know zoom in on the picture and look there's no blood on the knife there's no blood on me there's no blood anywhere no no uh uh nothing that shows this guy's been stabbed uh but they took that text message and that picture and that's that was their main piece of evidence they're like we got him and that's they were going around telling everybody they had me dead to rights like he's guilty he's, he's going away um but they had also since these um younger guys in my platoon had said there was a video uh, they were you know they were spreading that rumor as well saying like because the, the judge had put a gag order on all the evidence so you we weren't allowed to show the evidence to anybody and neither was the prosecution or they they weren't supposed to but as we come came to find out they were given whatever evidence they wanted to the media um to sort of smear my name but uh eventually we got the judge uh, to uh, let us show the video to Congress um, because that lie had gone all the way up to the White House saying there was a video of me doing uh, this act. And so once we were able to show the actual video to members of Congress and whoever else, it was they quickly realized that they had been lied to by the Navy. Uh, and that's where you know their case started crumbling. Is that is that pretty common though? When you you know you're you're going against an enemy, they're trying to kill you. They maybe have killed a couple of your buddies, people that you love, people that you spend time with, you're emotionally vested in it. They're willing to take your life. You're protecting your country. There's a certain level of animosity and hatred that's built for your enemy when you go up against them. Is it common at the end to take pictures of the enemy you take out? Is that pretty common? That happened? Well, Maybe not necessarily publicly. Let me post it on my Instagram. But is it common to, to do that, to say, hey, we took this guy out? Uh, yeah. But it's common uh, standard operating procedure uh, for some units to take pictures of the bodies that they've killed so they can, you know, bring back and uh, show proof, like, especially if they're a high value target. Uh, and then, you know, what we, we were messing around uh, and that's, I would say that's not common, I'd say, um, but it does happen. Uh, you know, I think the, the environment that we were in, um, it's hard to explain to people just uh, how it was going into that city every day. There was dead bodies piled up all over the place. Uh, we were watching women and kids get mowed down uh, on a weekly basis, um, just watching ISIS commit these atrocities. So we definitely uh, were super desensitized. Uh, and, you know, once you, you see that on a regular basis yep. from end, you don't really think twice about messing around like that. Um, obviously, when deployment's over and you come back to the states uh and you know certain people like what happened get a hold of that picture or yeah. see that they they freak out uh, and they're like how can how can you guys do this or how can you pose like this and it's like well you know you go ahead and uh, put yourself in my shoes for six months and or however many deployments and i'm, I'm not making excuses for it uh yeah. you know i've said it on other interviews before uh it was a wrong decision to do but it was done uh, you know, and I think I paid my dues for that. Yeah. And, you know, uh, 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 you've seen maybe the Netflix series Narcos about Pablo Escobar. Mm -hmm. I, I interviewed Steve Murphy and Javier Pena. Steve Murphy and Javier Pena were the two DA agents. Steve Murphy has that legendary picture that they show. It's on the cover of their books with him and a dead Pablo Escobar on the rooftop of a uh, building somewhere in Medellin. So that's what I mean. Like, is there, uh, there's, there's a part of it where 
you spend months and months and months, sometimes years going up against an enemy where you build up so much animosity. So I guess my question for you would be the following. What boils your blood? Like if, if, if somebody asks you a question, no one becomes a person at your level without being a fighter and having strong emotions where you're willing to put yourself out there to essentially bully the bully. You got to have a courage. You got to be brave. You got to be a little bit also, you know, uh, uh, off. You can't be uh, not maybe off is not the word I'm looking for. You got to be a little bit abnormal. Like even in the world of business, when you think about some of these guys that build a business and they ask uh, Bill Gates, so let me ask you, how much vacation did you do? He says, for 20 years, I never took a day off. That's you're a little bit off if you go 20 years without taking a day off. That's not what normal people would say. You're supposed to get eight hours of sleep. You're supposed to do this. No, if you if a man on, is on a mission, they're not wired the same way to go up against enemies like ISIS. But to you, what, what was boiling your blood and how did you view ISIS and what they were trying to take away from you or what they were trying to do to you and your country? You know, uh, you know what, what boils my blood is, a, you, you said it, uh, is bullies, right? Like ever since I was little, even coming up, I've, I've always stood up, tried to stand up for people. And I got in a lot of fights when I was growing up because of bullies or standing up for other people. Um, and that's exactly what ISIS was, is the ultimate bully. I mean, they were, they were pulling the most atrocious stuff I'd seen in my eight combat deployments. And I'd seen, you know, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda uh, do some nasty things, but ISIS seemed on a whole nother level. Um, and you just don't, you don't look at them after seeing what they do to other humans, um, especially, you know, other Iraqis, uh, you don't look at them as human anymore. You're just like I, you're, they're evil, and you need to be taken off this earth. There's no, there's no uh, court or thing that they should go to to you know decide their fate. It's like you chose your fate by being on this battlefield and by pulling the atrocities that you're doing. And we're gonna kill every one of you. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.